I had a best friend in college who had all these comics. He had like, like 10 grand worth of comics. And we'd sit and read these things, like it was crazy. So like, if you read the comics, Tom Holland's probably the most realistic Spider-Man. All right, Zavin, so welcome to The Vibes. You know, we talk about everything on and off the field. Now for the hard-hitting questions. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big MCU fan, right? like Marvel and the cinematic universe, yeah, yeah, universe yeah. and all that. With the new Spider-Man coming out, you know, yeah. who, who's, your, who's your favorite Spider-Man? Tom, Andrew, uh, or Toby? You know, it goes into like, if you read the comics, so like I used to, I used to have a best friend in college who had all these comics. He had like, like 10 grand worth of comics. And we'd sit and read these things, like it was crazy. <laughs> so like, if you read the comics, Tom Holland's probably the most realistic Spider-Man. Why? Just his personality just, and just all like, Just nerd stuff, yeah. Like, it's crazy. So uh, everything down to the smallest detail. The, that's why, like, uh, you know, watching those movies, when the latest one, it was like, uh, he had like the Spider-Man tingle or mm -hmm. whatever, you know? Yeah, the that Peter was, like, tingle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why it was such a big deal, because people were getting mad that he didn't have that. You know, they're like, Spider-Man in the comics has that. It's been so good so far. Why doesn't, why doesn't, it, why doesn't he have it now? If you were to construct your, your Avengers on the defensive side of, of this team, you know, who would, who would be your Captain America? <sighs> Let's start off with Captain America. Who would be who would be your leader? JJ. JJ. Who would be your Iron Man? Jordan Hicks. Jordan Hicks. Smart knows everything. Yeah. Incredible Hulk. You, in a way. Nah. Where would you find yourself, Thor? I feel like you'd be more of a Thor guy. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, I like, I like Doctor Strange, what they did the other day. That was pretty cool, all so this. Are you into all that? Like the oh, Lokis yeah. of the, the, the I watched all those. And the, yeah. and the, what's I watched what's your all theory? This. What do you think is gonna happen? Do you think, you know, Wanda, you know, everything that tied in with WandaVision and Loki is all gonna tie into- It'll movies, all tie in together. Doctor Strange it always movie. does. It always, all the movies tie in together, always. If you watch every Marvel, Marvel's known for like Easter eggs and cutscene. So you gotta pay attention to close detail. Like uh, the end game, you don't, you don't get the small details until Loki. Like the third, until like the third time you watch it. Yeah. I remember like before the big ending Marvel one uh, happened, I went back and like watched all the movies in chronological order. Uh, just it all to, makes sense. Just to like make sure I'm all up to date before I watch this final one. I was so invested. You know, or, like it was the first movie I ever paid like two months before watching, like bought tickets two months before. Like made my whole schedule around that for that week around that movie, so it was crazy. Are you a big COD fan? Yeah, I was always a big Call of Duty Are fan. Are you a big Warzone fan? Uh, yeah, I, I just got back into it, so I haven't really. I I can't play it too much. I, I get that addictive personality where I get into one thing, and like I have like certain times of year where I get into stuff, you know. And then one year, COVID year, we got so much. We got so bored. And we had so much time on our hands. We went and bought a boat. You want to buy a boat. That's what was crazy. Yeah, we had too much time on our hands. So, and we started wasting money. So what, what's what's going on at that point? You buy a boat, you go into, I know there's a- Yeah, like uh, me, and, me and my cousin and one of our friends, we all put our money together and we bought a boat. And we traveled all the way to Southern Arkansas to get it. And on the way back, this is a funny story. The first thing that I've ever purchased my own and then put my name on the title, we're driving back and like right outside of, you know, there's a, Old Mogi, which is in Oklahoma, it's a bad, it's not a really good town, some parts of it. And we were probably in the worst part of town and the tires on the trailer blow out. So we had to sleep overnight there. So it was like, man, this is our luck. First thing we buy, <laughs> tires blow out of the yeah, trailer. It's the universe speaking to you. Yeah. you have but we got it, we got it all taken care of and now it's like a family thing. You know, every 4th of July we go out and that's what we do. And this time they'll keep it on the ground and hit in the backfield and drag down as a Dallas running back. And there is Zayvon Collins with a tackle for loss on the very first run play of his career. The more camps that went on, it kind of got discouraging because he, you know, I mean, people were interested, but then, you know, they didn't start offering or anything. So I think he kind of got frustrated and I just kept pushing him. And I mean, it's, hasn't always been rainbows and butterflies for you, even, even during high school. I mean, you went from camp to camp all throughout the region, from state to state, and your mom was always there with you. Yeah. Go, going through that, like, you know, we all love our moms. You know, what, what does it mean to you having your mom next to you, taking you to all these camps? Yeah, my family, my mom is always, like, my family never missed a game. Uh, I think the first game that they missed of uh, my career, uh, like intentionally, like where they couldn't, like where they could come, but they didn't, was probably like uh, preseason of this year. 
So uh, that's the first game, like out of any sport. Out of any sport. So you gotta think like gymna gymnastics. gymnastics, like gymnastics, every baseball game in high school, every whatever, like some part of my family has always been there. Either my mom's there or my grandma's there or my uh, grandfather, aunt, uncle, someone's always there. So it was nice. Putting it into perspective from your mom's side, she was a single mother, essentially. What did it mean to you that she stuck through, through it with you and yeah. now it's paying off at the highest level? Yeah, it pays off at the highest level. It was nice, you know. My mom was definitely there uh, taking care of her. She's worked two jobs at once before, you know. She got uh, like a, you know, a nine to five and then she'd work like a six to nine, like part-time job. And then, you know, I've also had uh, the rest of my family supportive too, you know. So it was nice when my mom wasn't there. It was, you know, me and my cousin Peyton. He lives with me now here in Arizona. I moved to him with me. Um, we've always kind of been together, but uh, we also have my grandmother. So anytime that she wasn't there, we'd always be at my grandmother's house too. So those two kind of took care of us and my grandfather, of course. This is the funnest level. You know, when you play in high school, you're like, oh, it's better than what it was. And then college, this is way better than high school. And then when you're in the NFL, you're like, this is the best. It was like, this is the best. You know, I talked to your mom uh, a couple of days ago and you know, from the get-go, I asked her, I heard that Zaven was nameless for about three days. I had previously picked out um, the name Zaven, and my family didn't really like it. And the name that came up was Big Boy Collins. What, what did your mom talk to you about? Uh, What's the story behind that? Yeah, no, she just like, she didn't really have a name for me. And then, because uh, I think she wanted like a girl or something, she didn't, but she knew I was a boy, but she, uh, she didn't have a name for it, but she was working like at a, I believe at a courthouse or something. And she was going through paperwork and found like a name from, from some dude. His name was like Zayvon. She just changed it to Zayvon, so it was cool. I had the middle name, the family name, but I didn't have the first name. So, cause they didn't really like Zayvon to begin with, but I always did, so. She was also talking to me about how when you were, you started being competitive at four, right? Around four years old, you started yeah. playing baseball. What are your first memories from playing baseball at that age and just becoming competitive? Yeah, just like T-ball, you know, playing baseball, playing T-ball, just like that was just normal stuff around like where I'm from. You grew up, the first thing you play is baseball, then you kind of move into the basketball scene and then from basketball and football. And then gymnastics, it's only about gymnastics. Well, I heard, she was telling me how you, she didn't necessarily tell anybody that you were doing gymnastics and you started doing that at five and um, you know, where did that passion come from? You know, what to, what went through your mind? You know what? I want to do gymnastics. Um, I think, I don't even remember really. I think I just saw it on TV and then trying to do stuff in my house. And then it went on to, you know, we actually went to like a gym and tried to do stuff. And you were a big fan of the O2 Olympics, right? Yeah. So if you were in the Olympics this past summer, you know, what's... Golf. What, what, <laughs> That'd be like the sport. What's one of the sports that you would, you, would, <laughs> you know, win gold in potentially? Are you that good I, at golf? Though? No, you know, so I'm, I'm not like crazy, <laughs> but I can hold my own. Uh, I would say the coolest thing would be golf, but then I don't know what another fun one would be. I feel like gymnastics was always cool. That was always a cool sport to watch. Those people are freak athletes, with the lowest body fat percentage out of any athlete ever. <laughs> so it's crazy. Let's switch gears a little bit. What do you remember about the Wiggles? I heard you were always trying to. I don't even remember make anything. People. Your mom was telling me how you always try to you know, dance to the music and then I don't make remember. people laugh. Anything that she remembers, <laughs> I don't remember. You were always trying to make people laugh, make those around you laugh, you know, where does that come from, That the willingness to make people around you come I from? don't know, I've, I've always been kind of like a goofy kid. Everyone used to call me goofy. Uh, um, I know my, my mom always tells me stories about when I was young, I was goofy, like went and st like stuffed animals. I remember there's a story like a, it was, this is so country, this is so bad. Uh, we were like a crackle bear and I won like a stuffed animal and I was like running around, high-fiving like all the old people on the, like a Sunday, cause I won a stuffed animal, like running around the store. They're like, whose kid is that? And they're like, oh, that's mine. <laughs> and my mom was, so it was crazy. But uh, yeah, I've always kind of been like a goofy kid, but you know, enjoy life. Talking about animals, she was telling me a story about, you were about five years old and um, she had just killed a, a mouse in, in your guys' house and that you were so into animals at that point that you were trying to save the mouse, even though in her head she already knew it was dead and you took it out to the street and you, you laid it out in the middle of the street. And it wasn't gonna survive, it was just laying there. And when he was walking up to me, a cat saw into the mouse. And I don't know if he remembers that story, 
He was devastated. What, what yeah. comes to mind when, when I tell you that story? About I was like, who knows? I don't even know what I was thinking. I was probably just watched the animal show before that. <laughs> and you felt bad for the Yeah, I just felt bad, yeah. yeah. Um, you're, you're big into aviation going on. Yeah, I was big into it. That was, that was cool. I always found planes like super cool. You can name all cool. the planes. Right? Well, how yeah, many I used to like, I used to be, I can't, I don't even remember anymore, but like my whole room used to be decked out in like planes. Just like, 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 like all kinds of planes, like all different planes. I used to have all kinds of books. I read books constantly. And then I always wanted to be a pilot when I grew up. And then I realized I, I like, sophomore year high school I was like oh, there's no chance I'm way too Wait, big. why what goes through your mind oh, I can't be a, a pilot anymore. I'm just way too like I was way too tall like I'm not I can barely fit in the front seat of a truck how am I gonna I didn't even know that how am I gonna fit into, when it came yeah how am I gonna fit in a the cockpit and... you ready to roll Steve we're gonna kill everyone <laughs> we're gonna kill everyone <laughs> I like it and we know you make that bread in the NFL, man. You're a first round pick. What's what's one of the first things you purchased? For who? Maybe for your mom? You know, no, everything. so uh, the, the first thing I purchased was uh, I bought myself my dream car. I told myself, I saw a car. Uh, I, I saw a car in uh, when I was in Dallas training and it was uh, in a Mercedes Benz dealership. And I asked them, you know, all about it and stuff. And they gave me a card and I took that card and I put it in the back of my phone, kind of as like motivation. Mm -hmm you know, to be first round. So I, I went first round and I bought that, bought that car. You, that was the first thing that was your reward to yourself for being a first round pick. And then I just recently paid off uh, all, uh, all of my mo mother's debt, so. I would support him in everything he did, but that he just kept getting better at football, you know, through middle school and high school. But there's not one instance that was our change in point. And basically he changed my life, the, the track it was on. And so that was my change in point, probably is when I had him. What was going through your mind as soon as you, you told her, hey, I paid off all your debt, what was running, racing through your mind at that time? It was uh, good, you know. Because she had to make sacrifices when I was younger to, to take care of us. You didn't have enough money raising a kid, and you know, no child support, no nothing. So it was just really solo, solo dello. So you know, back then the uh, like uh, student loans were kind of what she was uh, helping, us, letting us survive on. So until this day, you know, 22 years later. Bro, if you have extra bread, man, I have like 12K in student loans. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Uh, Xavier, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate Thanks it, for bro. Thanks for your time, man. Welcome to the Vibes. Thank you. And best of luck this season, man. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you.